Good morning, everyone. Do you ever think about your tires? I think most of us just assume they're going to work. Well, it was on this date in 1844, June 15, that an inventor received a patent for the vulcanization of rubber. And who was he? Charles Goodyear. Here's a picture of latex coming out of a rubber tree. So latex is the name of the sap that comes out of a rubber tree. And this is not a new thing. The uh, ancient peoples of Mesoamerica, the Mayas, the Aztecs, and other native peoples knew about latex, and they probably made the first rubber balls. And this is a rubber ball that goes back to the uh, ancient times, and we know that the native peoples had a game where they used the rubber ball. We're not quite sure all the details of it, but it looks like they actually put it through a hoop, like you see pictured here. And these are found throughout uh, Central America. And uh, another legacy of that ball game that they played are some ball courts. So these are not handball courts, but it looks like the goal of the game was to keep the ball in play. And again, we're not quite sure all the details of it, but we're pretty sure it was a game using a rubber ball. And in this piece of art uh, from the olden days, you can see that rubber balls are being offered as sacrifices. So they were pretty important. So these are erasers, and the word rubber supposedly comes from the mid-1700s when people realized that this latex material was pretty good for rubbing off pencil marks. So here's Charles Goodyear. He was born in 1800 in New Haven, Connecticut. He worked in the hardware business and other things like that. He was sort of a curious guy and liked to tinker uh, with odds and ends, and he often made money and then lost money. He wasn't a very good businessman. Now this is the Roxbury Rubber Company in Boston. And he went up there to see what they were doing with what they called gum elastic, uh, natural rubber. Got his attention, and he was here for a while. He went back to Philly, was uh, made money, lost money. And one of the things about that early business was things made out of natural rubber didn't last very long. Like these uh, pieces of footwear here, they would tend to crack or they would just deteriorate, or they would get slick and slimy, and uh, they weren't very reliable. Well, the story is that one day he was um, working with combining rubber and sulfur over a hot stove. He kind of had an epiphany, and it seemed to give the rubber characters that made it less brittle and more long-lasting, and he called it vulcanization after the god Vulcan because heat was involved, and he got a patent for it. And soon vulcanization became quite common, and here's a picture of vats of that natural latex having sulfur added to them, and out of it comes vulcanized rubber. Well, Goodyear died on July 1 in 1860. He was traveling to see his daughter uh, in New York City, who was sick. He got there, found out she had died, and he collapsed, and died soon after, and here's his grave in New Haven. Connecticut. Now one thing that surprises people is that the Goodyear Tire Company was not started by him. It was actually started by a guy named Frank Cyberling 40 years later and he named it after Charles Goodyear. But Goodyear had nothing to do with the Goodyear Tire Company. And here's the first Goodyear blimp. Uh, this is in the 1920s. Not everybody agrees where the word blimp comes from but What's common, it seems, is the combination of the word British and then limp aircraft, meaning no internal structure. And over the years, Goodyear has had many blimps. We're familiar with them over sporting events. And uh, not that long ago, they came up with a semi-rigid airship. In other words, it did have a rigid internal frame, which means it wasn't a true blimp, but Goodyear still uses the word blimp. So the next time you see a Goodyear tire store, you might think on the guy who got the patent but never really made any money, but his name endures.